Hello everyone. So James and I decided to read the Rebs Candidate Guide and we thought we'd make a little summary presentation slash video for everyone to go over. Um, you should still read the Candidate Guide because it has a lot of information and we could have missed something or overlooked it. But here's just a summary of at least the first chapter and we'll try to go over all of them. So the first chapter is just the general information about the exam. So it starts out with what's important to bring to the exam. You need two pieces of identification. The first one needs to have a photo and signature, and you can see examples of what that is on the page. And the second one should have your name and signature, and you can see examples of that here on the slide. All identifications must be valid, meaning that they cannot be expired, and they have to have the same name on it as your name on your REB information. Once you get those two pieces of ID submitted, you can get your badge and stickers, which you're going to use during the entire weekend of the exam. So the exam can be broken down into five key components. The CTP, which you should have already taken. Operative, which can be um, your first attempt is a class two composite amalgam or cast gold inlay or onlay. And if you fail your first attempt, you can retake the exam with a class 2 composite amalgam cast gold or a class 3 composite. The third section is endo, which is on plastic teeth. You're going to have a maxi essential incisor, which you access instrument and obturate, and a mandibular first molar, which you only need to access and identify all the canals. Their fourth section is perio, which is one quadrant scaling and root planing. And the last section is PROS, which I'm not going to go over in this PowerPoint just because I assume most people are not taking it. But if you are interested, review the candidate guide for all the information. Scoring. So this is kind of a basic overview. As we go over each of the chapters in subsequent videos, we'll go over the exact details. But the key here is that pretty much everything is graded by three graders, and you need a median score of the three to pass each exam. So in operative, each category is scaled on one to five, and you have to average a three to pass the exam. If you get less than a three on your first attempt, you can take a second attempt, and the average between the two scores must be a three or above to pass. Endo is broken down with 27% for each axis and 46% for the obturation of the anterior. And once again, your average with these percentages has to be a three to pass. You can retake the endo section if time allows also, usually on the Monday of the exam. Perio, you'll have two or more graders and you must get at least a 75%. We'll go over the details of how much calculus that actually is in a subsequent video. But the same thing, if, if you fail and you have another patient, you can retake this section. CTP, you should have already taken, but there's three cases and you need to get a three to pass. Um, at the end of each day of REBS, you will get a provisional score. So you'll kind of know if you passed or failed the sections at the end of the day. However, these can change. Also, you have three attempts at each section. And if you fail three times, then you'll have to do remediation before you can retake the entire REBS. Now, the key here also is that there isn't going to be enough time to retake all these sections. So hopefully you pass. And if you need to retake something, we'll kind of go over when that usually happens. So retakes. If you fail endo, pros, or perio, you can retake the same section at the same site in that weekend. The only caveat here is that the operative section must be taken first. Okay. And then endo retakes are only on day three, which is Monday. And perio retakes are only on day two and three. Certain critical errors will not allow you to retake exams, and we're going to go over that later. And then, like we said before, there is remediation. So if you fail any section three times, there is a remediation that you have to go through before you're allowed to retake the REBS. So what are things that can cause you to completely fail? It pretty much is broken down into two categories, either improper performance or unethical conduct. Um, Really quickly, improper performance can be anything from very poor case selection, disregard for patient welfare, failure to recognize systemic issues, unclear appearance, rude behavior, disregard for sterilization techniques, excessive tissue trauma, grossly inadequate performance, or not following the REBS candidate guidelines. 
unethical things can be like using unauthorized equipment, unauthorized assistance, unauthorized patients, altering record, treating patients not in the time allowed, changing your endo teeth, any sort of dishonesty, communicating with people you're not allowed to communicate with, disguising treatment performance on a patient or anything that would be considered unprofessional. Any such behavior could also be reported to the state board, your dental school, or any other professional organization. So the schedule, pretty much we have four official days. Friday is orientation day, so there's no actual dentistry being done those days. Saturday and Sunday, we're there from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. You will have three hours assigned for the endo section sometime on Saturday and Sunday, and you'll find, you will find out a month beforehand when that section is, and you can't switch that around. Your operative and perio can be performed at any time between 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on those two days, except for when you're doing endo. After 4.30 p.m., you're not allowed to submit anyone. You can only place temporary restorations, dismiss patients, clean your operatories, or leave. 5 p.m., you have to be out of the building. Monday is the extra day or the retake day. So from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m., there will be an opportunity to retake sections like we talked about earlier. So in regards to kind of a daily schedule, 7 a.m. is when the clinic is open, so you can start your setup. 7.30, your floor examiners will arrive. 7.45, your patients can be checked in and sent into the grading room, but the grading will only begin at 8 a.m. So general late penalties, uh, between one to five minutes past due, you'll lose 0.2 of a point for operative or 4% for perio. For six to 10 minutes, 0.4 of a point or 8% for perio. 11 to 15 minutes, 0.6 of a point or 12% for perio. And after 16 minutes, you have failed any exam that you were taking. So be really on time. Uh, there's two types of examiners. The first ones are your floor examiners. So these are people who are not grading you, but they are there to answer any possible questions you can have. Uh, and they're not anonymous, right? You'll know who they are and they will know who you are. They can help you with any paperwork, worksheets, uh, checking people in and anything like that. Um, your grading examiners are people you will never see, but they are the people who actually grade you. And they're, of course, anonymous, so they don't know who you are. You don't know who they are. Some general guidelines. The only people allowed on the clinic for floor are candidates, patients, and assistants. All your paperwork is on a standard American numbering system, so 1 through 32. All paperwork should be done in ink, so no pencil. If you make any mistakes on the paperwork, you are supposed to get a new piece of paper and rewrite it. No cell phones or smartwatches are allowed during endo for us, the candidates. And no cell phones or smartwatches are allowed by the patient in the grading area. So a patient has to leave their cell phone or smartwatch with you. Patients must sign all their consent forms, which you can see in the back of this chapter. It's 20, page 24 to 27. Uh, no surgical procedures are allowed, and then REBS is allowed to take any photos of your work that they find necessary. So assistance. As many of you know, you're allowed to have assistance during the operative and perio procedures, but there's some rules here. The assistants can be on the floor with you and they can bring patients to the grading areas as long as all the paperwork has been properly completed. But the assistants are not allowed at orientations. The assistants can either be a real dental assistant or a dental student, but it cannot be a dental student in their last year of dental school. So in our case, only first and second years are allowed to be dental assistants. Um, an assistant cannot be a dentist or a dentist from a foreign country. And there is a dentist assistant verification form. You can find it on page 24 of your candidate guide that your assistant will have to sign. For perio, it's very important. Your dental assistant cannot be a hygienist or a hygiene student. And then for operative, you also have to make sure your assistant does not have any permits to place or finish restorative materials. So no extended function dental assistants or none of assistants that in other states can place any sort of restorative materials. For equipment, we're very fortunate at UOP. UOP will provide all the equipment for us. At some other schools, you actually have to rent it. Um, the candidate guide also specifies that some uh, procedures get special equipment. So for operative, that's your mouth mirror, pigtail explorer, shepherd's hook, and articulating paper forceps, which will all be in our um, cassette that we already use. And for perio, you're allowed special equipment, which is the mouth mirror, 1112 explorer, and a new perio probe. 
Uh, the one kind of hard part of Rebs is we are allowed to use Cavatrons, but we have a really limited amount of them at the university. So the school will actually um, have a sign-up sheet for us, and you're going to have a designated amount of time with the Cavatron. Usually it's around 30 minutes that you're allowed to use it. If you want, though, you can bring in your own Cavatron. Then it's up to you. You can use it as much as you want. Any chair issues that you have during the exam, we will have maintenance on site. And if it takes more than 15 minutes to get anything done, then um, that time will be allotted back to you towards the exam. Paperwork. There is a bunch of forms for us to fill out. Uh, one of them is the post-operative care form. This is given to patients that have had any soft tissue laceration, pulp exposure, fractured restorations, defective margins, and contacts. So these are people that need to um, see, seek dental care sooner rather than later. Um, there's also instructions to candidate forms. So this is what you're going to use to request caries removal, affected dentin, sound, unsound enamel, or remaining restorative material. And then lastly, all patients need to have a follow-up care agreement, which must be signed by a dentist or the dental school that the patient will seek if they need any dental care. This one's especially important because if the patient doesn't have a dentist that they go to or to our dental school, then they technically cannot be a part of REBS and you will not get your score until this paperwork is filled out. You can see the actual paper on page 27 of the candidate guide. Patient selection. So for perio, your patient must be over 18. Operative, your patient can be of any age. Uh, patient cannot have more than two years of dental school experience. It can No dentist or any kind of professional is allowed to pre-qualify the patient. So you officially, you can't come up to someone and say, hey, is this a REBS eligible patient? Um, all patients can be shared with only one exception, that anybody who needs antibiotic prophylaxis. So you and your friend can't have the same patient if that patient needs antibiotic prophylaxis. Um, shared patients, though, still need separate approvals for all procedures. So you submit your own x-rays and everything, even if it's the exact same patient. And they're going to need separate paperwork for everything also. So a medical history form is submitted for all patients. You can see the form on page 25 and 26 of the candidate guide. Key here is you're going to take pre-op blood pressure. The blood pressure must be at 159 over 99 or lower. If it's between 160 to 180 or 100 or 110, as you see, you need medical clearance beforehand. And then um, REBS also follows the American Heart Association guidelines for antibiotic prophylaxis. You are not allowed to have patients who have taken bisphosphonates for bone cancer or severe osteoporosis. No patients that take insulin shots. No patients that have had a heart attack, stroke, or heart injury in the last six months. No active tuberculosis and no patients with latex allergies. Anyone who's HIV positive will need a med consult beforehand. Anyone who's pregnant needs legal permission from a physician. Patients must sign the medical history form to say that everything is accurate on here. Radiographs. So we'll go over more of this once we read the operative section. But you can have either digital or conventional radiographs. All radiographs must be diagnostic. Um, you use a number two conventional film size, or if it's digital, it should be the same size. Um, all the x-rays need to have your candidate number, your patient's first name, procedures with tooth number and surfaces. The examiners are not allowed to zoom or magnify any of your images. And you can enhance or sharpen your images, but you're not allowed to use Photoshop or any kind of similar photo, uh, programs to alter your images. So the first step really is going to be our candidate orientation, which is on Friday. This is when you bring those IDs like we said on the first slide, and it's when you will get your badges, all your worksheets for operative and perio, your dental assistant verification form, all your labels, and three patient packets and questionnaires for you to fill out. All right, so our next video will be on the operative section, which is the next part of the REBS candidate guide. We still, like we said earlier, highly recommend that you read this candidate guide really well, just so you're prepared.